Time to improve the way we manage code. As improvements go, the last adjustment to the code editor was not the best change for readability. At the same time, the desktop environment is part of our toolkit and will be adjusted for higher clarity. Let's exit dark mode and switch to an illumination setting known for clarity. By the way, this is the Cinnamon desktop and it offers many abilities in terms of customizations. Gedit has a preference setting where we can adjust the text editor for preference in terms of visibility and readability. And I find more items are visible and readable in this mode than most others. When you plan your project in advance or have a better sense of what is needed from experience, you can take actions more swiftly and comprehensively. In this case, we can expand the folder and file structure and ramp up both quickly. In this case, the command line with bash history is faster than the file manager user interface. mkdir, which stands for make directory, allows you to quickly make a directory and you can use um, the up arrow in the command line to switch back to the command you just issued and then change it real quick and type in the next uh, directory. The more proficient you get at this, you're actually um, able to make directories faster than you can click, right click in the command line. I'm sorry, in the GUI. Touch is another command and what Touch does is it updates an existing file's timestamp. So if you had a file from five years ago and you typed touch on that file, touch would change the timestamp to today, to the current time. If you type touch and supply a file that does not exist, touch will simply create a new file with the current timestamp. The new file will be an empty blank file. You could probably see the potential here if you wrote a script that involved make make deer and touch to generate a blank project template. So once this is done we will have the majority of files we need to make a more in-depth software application that has solid structure and huge potential for expressing code structure, representing intent, as well as being highly susceptible to proper management. As management goes, we want to make sure we do not lose momentum with our ability to build on this new structure. Bakefile is crucial and instrumental to that objective. So I did a directory listing and I'm going to copy it out of the command line into the text editor so I can adjust it accordingly create sources directives in the bake file. What this will do is it will take the, each source file and compile it according to the CPP flags and the LD flags specified in the bake file.
it makes good sense to comment parts of a file and I prefer comments that tell me what something is rather than how something works. You can always look up the how in documentation, in API documentation or tool documentation. When you are using those tools or APIs, there's no need to restate what is already written. Rather, you can make a statement about why it is you're using these particular set of directives or how you identify them. And in many cases, identifying the directives as in, in the way of saying giving a group of files a name and comments can be more effective than an elaborate um, string of comments. By the way, if there's any concern about what a compiler directive is in the way of CPP flags or LD flags, you can go in the command line terminal and type MAN space GCC. When you press enter, it will open up a manual about GCC where you can um, type forward slash and then some text and press enter and then type the letter N to step through all the matches on that term that you're searching for in that manual. You can also refer to the online documentation that I mentioned earlier that I downloaded and refer reference in Firefox. However, there are some things that a manual like this just cannot explain from a practical usage standpoint. And for that, I recommend a book by the title of C slash C++ Compiling. The author's name is Mylan. And Mylan, he did a really great job laying out the case for different compiler flags and laying out the case for how you use them. He describes the make file process just a bit and if you want to know how to work with compilers and linkers on the command line there is no better book that exists than the one he has written and then you can take that information and combine combine it with bake file or if it's your choice Mason, M-E-S-O-N, that's a build system that um, several Unix and Linux projects are switching to. Or you can try Google's uh, Bazel, B-A-Z-E-L. It hit the 1.0 release a few weeks ago. And you could try those, but at the end of the day, best use of those tools still requires at a fundamental level that you understand the details of compiler flags and compiler directives to get the best use out of them. And hence that's one of the greatest benefits of the process that we are using today and that it keeps your wits sharp and your skills strong and your insight and intuition well developed when it comes to the use of these tools so that you use them more effectively. Here we're using Bakefile as a shortcut for handwriting our own make files or handwriting our own bash shell scripts with dozens and dozens of GCC flags or claim flags we can avoid all of that we define this flag once this file once make small adjustments to it as the project changes and out comes a intricate and professional make file that we can then use by simply typing the word make m-a-k-e 
and referencing the generated make file and it will take care of all the rest. And it is the command line equivalent of a visual IDE. So visual IDEs do much the same work behind the scenes. This closes the gap between a visual IDE and working on the command line when it comes to building software. So now that the make the bake file is done and we have the script called create make which is going to take care of tying the bake file that we've defined to the bake file program which interprets it and generates a make file. So then from this point forward all we have to do is say create make and it will build a correct make file so then when we send the code up to the build server all we have to do is do you know build whatever and it all just happens that's the make file you're probably asking yourself who would want to write that on a daily basis and that's the reason why we have bake file all right, so it's time to modify our um, transfer scripts so that they are more usable and to head up any unnecessary cleanup that would ensue with more in-depth uses of SCP. It's good to know SCP should have some familiarity with it. And of course, the um, less often you use it, it's like just about anything. You eventually forget how to use it, you know, instinctively. But rsync is a better option than SCP when moving masses of files. rsync still uses SSH. And so we can take rsync, and what it will do better is it will transfer groups of files and allow us to exclude those files from the transfer that are not necessary or we do not necessarily want to transfer them. So you may have six files and you want to hold back two of those and SCP does not provide a good way of doing that rsync does at the same time SCP will simply copy the same file over and over again right so if the file hasn't changed on the destination right what rsync does better is it knows which files need to be transferred because they are newer than what's on the other side and so it will hold back those files that haven't changed so it saves you bandwidth and even though we're working on a local virtual machine it also speeds us up and there is our make script and there's our first use of it and so far so good it does exactly what we intend and here it's identified that we have an issue in what we're referencing so we have a usage issue the include file the file name is correct but we need to add additional path information so we have set our include directory to be the source directory so our include directives are expected to refer to all files relative to that source directory. So to refer to the files from the top of the source tree on down. Sometimes you'll see code examples where the include directives are very relative and what that does is it um, causes issues when trying to move the files around. So 
this approach preserves your ability to refactor the files themselves, not just refactor the code, but refactor the files themselves in terms of where they're located. So we've successfully built the application and we're ready to go.